All righty, everybody. Welcome back to a <laughs> Six Five Live news breaking edition, or shall I say, breaking news edition. Um, Pat Moorhead and I are here uh, once again this morning. We got on. We were talking about a big acquisition that Qualcomm made of Nuvia, big disruptive $1.4 billion play. And then Intel said, wait, hold my beer. And um, then uh, was it David Farber uh, from CNBC broke a story uh, that Intel had decided on moving away from Bob Swan with him leaving in the middle of February and the appointment of Pat Gelsinger, CEO of VMware, um, was imminent, but since then has been confirmed. Yes. Uh, welcome to the show, Pat. Oh, I'm sorry. That's a, a static image of, uh, of Pat. But yeah, so many things going on. Uh, I think we did our first cast at 745 this morning, and, and here we are, uh, <laughs> hitting, it, hitting it again. So... Uh, maybe the first place to start uh, would be uh, why the change, uh, Daniel? Yeah, you know, there's a number of factors, and uh, I'll try to hit on a few of them. But from a, I'll, I'll touch on the investor side of things. The stock had been pretty stagnant this year. You'll see um, in the chart that we're showing there, uh, the AMDs, and NVIDIA's and Qualcomm's moving versus uh, Intel. So Intel trading at about a multiple of just over 10 right now of its trailing 12 month earnings. And you're seeing 50, 90 and 150 with AMD up at the top there. Um, you know, and, and, and when investors are getting the returns with those other semi companies, it's just very hard for Intel to continually in, excite an investor community. So that was a big piece of the story there. But the other part of it, Pat, um, really came down to the confidence shaken of the market of investors and to some extent suppliers with a number of issues that have gone on over the last couple of years in their process, uh, et cetera. So I'll, I'll let you touch on that because I don't want to take the whole story there. But, you know, it starts with the stocks not up. It's not where it needs to be. And then a number of operational challenges. Yeah, uh, the reality is, is that uh, Bob Swan was dealt a very difficult ha uh, hand. Uh, when he when he took the reins from BK, uh, ten nanometer, uh, um, you know, was already off the rails uh, when when he took uh, the reins. And uh, I I I do like you. I think it really came down to investor pressure and impatience. I mean, if I look at all of the earnings reports uh, in aggregate, uh, they weren't all great. But man, there were there were a few really great earnings reports. Uh, where the company took advantage of, of what it calls data centric uh, opportunities, which con is a combination of uh, data center plus the uh, the edge. And from a patient standpoint, the reality is, is that when a chip company gets into a challenge, many times these are years long issues. So uh, came down to uh, a, a lack of patience and, and the optics Right. If it wasn't Apple, it was uh, AWS spinning up their their next generation. Um, I, I did uh, likes the two businesses that that Swan uh, Bob Swan got out of, uh, namely modems uh, and, and NAND. So I'm hoping that uh, Bob's legacy, you know, is, isn't completely negative because he was dealt uh, a hard hand uh, and he did do some uh, very, uh, very good things. Yeah, I think it's important you point that out, Pat, because I think a lot of people are, A, trying to uh, in, incite that the Dan Loeb third point memo <laughs> last week was the turning point, and it wasn't. I mean, Pat, we've been hearing rumblings for the better part of five months about the CEO search. Of course, that was unconfirmed, but, you know, that stuff tends to get out there. Um, you know, the company is seeking technology leadership. And we'll touch on that in a minute here, but it's not an entirely surprising uh, moment. And by the way, you're exactly right. Bob did not create this problem. Perhaps if you want to give any criticism, it was that he didn't have the magic to fix all the problems. Right. Um, you know, and, and if I could just add a couple of why to the changes, um, you know, some big key movements away from Intel, Apple, namely, the big one, but you also saw a whole new set of companies getting into semiconductors that added pressure. And, you know, got to give a lot of credit to 
uh, Lisa Su and, and Jensen Huang of uh, AMD and NVIDIA, respectively. By the way, um, are they relatives? Did I, did I actually read that somewhere? That's that's a joke, right? Um, but anyways, um, the uh, AMD and, and, and NVIDIA story um, was that those companies crushed it. They crushed yeah. it during this period of time. From an NVIDIA standpoint, it was AI. From an AMD standpoint, it was the uh, notebooks. I mean, those were the, you know, they were gaining market share on Intel. And, you know, history says you don't gain market share on Intel. So you put that together with the process technology issues and um, uh, it was just too much, too fast, and they yeah. needed to change. I think Pat's perfect. And by the way, I hope everyone gets the joke. There's an internet rumor that's floated around about that. I was, I was being silly. Yeah, I've seen that too, Daniel. So uh, <laughs> let's talk into uh, what Pat Gelsinger uh, brings to the table. Uh, when I was uh, at AMD, he was one of my arch uh, nemesis. Uh, he 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 ran um, what would be called the data center business, uh, Opteron, and I competed head to head uh, with him when I was at AMD. So he was a a force to be reckoned with. Uh, he was at Intel for. Um, gosh, 30 years. It's hard to believe he was there for 30 years, but he's very respected. He's an engineer's uh, engineer. Uh, people like him. Uh, his morals and values are, are, very, uh, are, are very high. And I think people are, are cheering at Intel today. And again, nothing against Bob Swan, uh, but uh, I, I think if nothing else, uh, it'll attract engineers to the company, top engineers. And uh, if you've never seen a Pat Gelsinger uh, uh, keynote, uh, you really should. Uh, it's very different. Uh, yeah. It's kind of nerdy, uh, unapologetically nerdy. And, and I think that is what Intel needs uh, right now. I love that you say that. First of all, uh, your your appearance on CNBC. Um, <laughs> when you said that, my bells went off in my brain. And obviously, I um, you know I was talking to some of the press as well about this, and and went on TV. And one of the things that you said was immediately to me, Pat. It was Pat's going to invigorate a culture that wasn't you know desperate, but that had lost some of its mojo. And Pat is the right profile to do that. He's going to speak the language of the people that can be most influential in changing it and bringing that tech leadership angle back. Um, but what I didn't think about when you said it just rang the bell is Intel has seen talent distribute from its uh, Santa Clara headquarters to its biggest competitors over the past few years, NVIDIA, AMD, Qualcomm, Microsoft, Google um, have all, and some are, are partners, but they're all competing in the sense that they're all more and more into Silicon, right? Apple. Yeah. And, and so it's been a harder time though, drawing them back, drawing the best people back. We saw Qualcomm and Nuvia make a deal. The folks that were at Nuvia would have been perfect for Intel. It would have been a perfect deal. <laughs> yeah, it, it is into, yeah, I'm wondering, you know, if I know that Intel was in the running uh, 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 for, for it. it, it was a derby of deals, by the way, uh, I, I was showing uh, my CNBC spot and here is your Yahoo finance spot. And I think you had a coat on and now you've got a hoodie on what's going yeah, now on. I'm, uh, I'm going skiing and then I'm going to go raise some venture capital. Um, <laughs> is what I'm gonna do. But, uh, um, no, but in, in, in all serious, Pat, I mean, if he can draw that talent that takes the company to the next level, starts breaking things in a really good way, creating that innovation uh, ecosystem, moving faster, um, you know, not fearing their competition, but really running fast and forward. And that, you know, even in the few years that I've worked closely in the in, in the semi space with the Intel, AMD, NVIDIA ecosystem, Intel has continually yeah. become a little more defensive. And it used to be so unapologetic. So that example that you gave of Pat yeah. Gelsinger fits so well of the intel that really, you don't want to use the word dominate because that's such a negative word in tech, but that really was able to be the leader in every market that it chose to pursue and not accepting anything else. And that's what we need to see Gelsinger. And that's what his first days in, 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 in as CEO, he needs to compel his Intel, uh, his Intel community, his employees and constituents, 
his board that he's the right, you know, that he's going to do that. Obviously the board bought in, but that he starts to immediately show the propensity to, to act on that. One thing I really uh, admire uh, about, uh, about Pat, I, I, well, first of all, I, I appreciate he wears his, his faith on his sleeve, but uh, he does bring uh, some incredible amount of uh, vigor uh, to the table. And I liked what you said about, you know, unapologetically, you know, no apologies. Uh, and, and that's what he was uh, phenomenal uh, at uh, uh, when, when, when he was there. And I think if nothing else, uh, the perception, even though Intel is primarily engineers, uh, the, um, you know, particularly when you add the fab, uh, it will have more of an engineering perception than it, uh, than it did before. And I do think it'll attract, uh, like you said about the Nuvia folks, uh, I think it'll attract, uh, a lot of, uh, a, a lot of, uh, a lot of talent. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm completely on board with that. So, you know, some other items, Pat, in terms of changes in store is, you know, beyond the, you know, moving towards tech leadership, changing the culture, hiring is, I think he's going to be laser focused on operations. I mean, I, mean, I think Bob yeah. was too, but I think um, Pat's going to continue that and he's going to actually accelerate that. Um, and, and something you said, so I'll give you credit, but through de-risking, I think, you know, Dan Loeb's idea of, of going fabulous is a never, it's a non-starter for Intel. But the idea of the company partnering in some cases with uh, fabs that could ex accelerate uh, their production and increase yield is a reality based, especially upon the diversification of their chipsets and all the things the company is doing. I think he is going to push forward to make sure that supply is not an issue and that the company is able to get to its next process nodes more quickly. Um, because I think those are areas that if even one or two wins, Pat, and, and I'll let you, I'd love for you to speak to this, but I think one or two wins in terms of saying, this is when seven nanometers coming and then hitting that. This is when five nanometers coming and hitting that. This is when our discrete GPU, um, you know, this Havana product is out or, you know, and I think hitting those is going to instantly instill investor confidence. And by the way, Pat Gelsinger just showing up gave the stock like a seven to 10% boost today. <laughs> and by the way, not to knock on it, cut AMD and it cut uh, VMware materially. People felt a swing yeah. in, in, in power showing there's a lot of investor confidence in Pat Gelsinger. Yeah, I uh, on the strategy part, you know, changes in store for Intel. I'll stick to my guns on this one. I've been very consistent. Intel has the right uh, strategy. Uh, and the biggest things it's doing is is expanding the definition of compute with the XPU, traditionally a CPU company, CPU, GPU, FPGA, and uh, ASIC in the form of neural network uh, accelerators uh, like Habana, uh, network ASICs, uh, the bit, and um, uh, uh, disaggregating its designs uh, with uh, 2D, 2.5D, and, and 3D uh, packaging. Now, the one thing uh, we could see is, is Gelsinger might come in and say, hey, I've got too many things going on at the same time. Because if you think of all the plates, oh, the third plate is getting to more industry standard design rules to go into a new fab, right? Um, so a lot of things uh, going on at the same time. I, I think uh, Pat will come in with a, with a, a refreshing look and, and might say, and we're doing too much. Bob already got the company out of NAND uh, and um, uh, modems. You modems. Know, what else is there to cut? Mobileye? I think Mobileye is very inextricably linked to compute and multiple levels of compute. But that would be the only thing I can imagine that the, that the company uh, gets, uh, uh, gets away from. I, I would see it as a very damaging pivot for the company to exit its data-centric strategy. Um, you know, it's built a very... Uh, polished narrative about how all of the things play together from networking, memory, storage, security, compute. Um, so that would be dangerous. You know, it's it's definitely rapidly expanding its line for notebook CPU. You saw a big rollout at CES, which, you know, thanks to the news today, we barely talked about, but, you know, um, 50 new, I believe, different uh, SKUs, over 200 designed. Yeah. I love that the company brought back Pentium. It brought back so much nostalgia <laughs> for me. Um, I wasn't as passionate about Celeron, but I get it. Uh, 
you know, I always wanted the P2 or the P3. But yeah, I mean, the, the point is, and, and I said this, in, and, and I'm, I'm working on a piece that'll go out on Market Watch, an op ed that'll come out later. But I basically said, Pat, I said, um, Bob didn't inherit a great situation, and Pat did not inherit a terrible situation, meaning that there, there's going to be both things are going to be said, but, but Bob came in in a tougher situation and did make things a little bit better. And Pat's come in, and he's got to make it a lot better. But, you know, the company's ecosystem is pretty well intact. It's got a lot of ODMs and OEM partners that are still building a lot of products and devices around Intel. Mobileye has advanced. Their discrete GPU business has advanced. The data center business is still very strong revenue-wise. Um, their ASIC business, the FPGA business, they, there's a lot of pieces there for Pat to work with. So I find that to be encouraging. He's going to have a big task in front of him. The slate is not an easy one, but it is, it is something that... I believe he's capable of handling Pat. So, so yeah, let's do a little, uh, let's wrap this baby up and talk about what's going to happen at VMware. You know, I mentioned the stock was down a little bit in the reaction to this. We know the company Dell Tech that holds the vast majority of the stock uh, filed an 11D last year, which was essentially exploration of the fact that they might have spun off the company. The market did not love Pat's exit in terms of VMware stock. What happens now? Yeah, so uh, this is going to, not change the filing uh, one bit, no change here. Uh, but uh, I'll admit I was a little surprised that um, there was a, a a full and formal search uh, being done here because, you know, to me uh, the the clear uh, favorite for this is their COO uh, Sanjay uh, Punit, and uh, let me give you a a, a graphic uh, of that. Um, you know, Sanjay has been at the company for a long time. Uh, he has a, uh, a, a track record of success uh, at, at the company. And maybe this is just a, a formality or something. But typically, uh, each company has a what happens if the CEO leaves uh, playbook, right? Uh, every major company. So I'm kind of surprised. That, uh, that this went out. I, I had thought that uh, uh, Sanjay uh, would have been uh, just uh, the shoe in here. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't know him as well as you, but I've heard really good things. Uh, he seemed like the logical next in line. Um, maybe there's a plan, like remember IBM did with the grooming with Jim Whitehurst, where you got a really strong feeling that that's coming. Maybe right. they, like bring someone that could be an interim that could co coach him up. Maybe he's slated for that interim gig, but they're wanting to make sure they're not missing any candidates. Appointing a CEO is a big thing. And I think the one thing, uh, VMware has been on an incredible run in a very crowded and important space. It's going to face new battles, new competition. Maybe the, the company wants to see what uh, options might be out there, who might ring the door. Yeah, um, And of course, um, with that 11D kind of out there and the possible spinoff, there might be a thought of an interim CEO that's more of a financial wizard and engineer that could work very closely with Michael because, you know, Michael's brilliant in those types of situations that could be part of this transition. And then Sanjay may be coming straight into it after that. So there's a few different things that I read if you kind of look at the tea leaves, both from the financials and the business. But if it's just the day-to-day -day operations, he does seem like the logical fit to step right into that role. Well, I I give Sanjay credit with uh, their strategy. And I know the CEO owns the strategic role at the end of the day, but I, I, I know that Sanjay, this is his strategy. Uh, and not just to go execute, but, uh, uh, but, but also uh, create. So uh, Daniel, uh, I think we're coming uh, up on time here. Again, the big news of the day, uh, Intel appoints Pat Gelsinger as their new CEO, uh, effective uh, in, in February. And uh, hopefully we've uh, shined a few spotlights in areas that, uh, that uh, you didn't know uh, existed. But yeah. uh, with that said, uh, please don't use this as investment uh, advice. Uh, it's for entertainment and education uh, purposes only. In fact, do the opposite of, of, of what you think we're saying. Huh. Uh, uh, but, but anyways, if you like what you've heard, uh, go to our YouTube uh, channels for different companies and press the subscribe button. With that, 
have a great day. And I promise you, we're not going to be back on here later today unless there's another acquisition or uh, another CEO gets appointed. So with that, have a great one. Great to see you, Daniel.